So news just keep coming out. Bobby Kotick um, from Activision Blizzard, the president, uh, he just had a sit-down interview with um, CBS and he's saying that this deal will be fast-tracked. Let's look and see what he's saying. This is I Don't Give Him a J and let's listen to Bobby. Right after the, this news came out yesterday, earlier than had been expected after that news, the company beat the street's expectations, both in terms of profit and in terms of revenue. Joining us right now, first on Squawk Box, Squawk Box to talk about all of this is Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick. And Bobby, thank you for being here today. Welcome. Thanks for having me. OK, we're going to talk about the numbers in, in just a moment because the earnings were quite a bit better than the street was expecting. But the big news yesterday is what happened with the U.K. CMA, uh, the Competition and Markets Authority. That is what a lot of people assumed was kind of a, an entity that could not be overruled, could not be appealed to. There is an appeal process, but it's kind of convoluted. You're appealing to the same people who just said no to the deal. How does this work? Lay this out. Walk us through this, because yesterday Francis D'Souza was here. He's the CEO of Illumina, and he said even though he's fighting regulators both here and over in Europe, he said he wouldn't take on the CMA on another deal they saw because they didn't think it was beatable or that you could appeal it. Yeah, well, first, thank you for having me. I always love being here. Um, just for the benefit of my employees who worked so hard, you know, we had uh, net bookings up 25 percent, our gap earnings up 70 percent. So we had a great quarter. Yeah. Business is, uh, is great. And um, the ruling was disappointing. I think when you look at the facts and you look at what the opportunities are for the U.K., this was a transaction that was only going to enhance opportunities for competition, for our players, for employees. And it was just a flawed ruling in every respect. And what it demonstrated to us is that these regulators, they don't really understand our business. And so they're making determinations and judgments that are not factually correct. And I think when you go to the tribunal, that's what you have to focus on, is whether or not it was irrational. It was irrational. Whether it was fact-based, it was not. And I think while Francis might not think that that's the place to appeal, it was such a... I should say for him, not for right. you, uh, right. he was referring to. I, I will, I will it's tell the you, only place to appeal, I, actually, realistically. It, is, it was so flawed in every way that it actually is going to create a lessening of competition which is the opposite of what their mission is. And so we think the, comp the appeals tribunal will see that and rule in our favor. How does it work? And have there been people who have been successful at this in the past? Um, yeah, last year there was a, a firm, I think it's called FNZ, that appealed. They won. The CMA then had to go back and accept their remedies. And so, you know, there's a process, I think, we didn't expect to have to use it, but I think that we'll be successful in that result. Microsoft has, has kind of alluded to this, too, that they are looking for ways to kind of massage the regulatory to make some other offerings to come up with it. And I, I think the CME had kind of hinted at the idea that maybe if Call of Duty was spun off, that that might be something that made them feel better about things. Is that a realistic expectation? Is that something that there is the possibility for? You know, I think what we found through this process is that Re these regulators are now taking dogmatic positions that they don't serve the interest and the missions of what they're actually established to do. So you can't say, oh, we only are going to accept structural remedies, but not behavioral remedies. It makes no sense. That, and that isn't actually consistent with their historic missions. And so in this case, you know, divesting something like Call of Duty, it, it's, it's not practical. And they actually didn't really suggest that. Can we just talk about sort of the, the timing of this? So UBS put out a report yesterday saying that they had looked at how transactions that are under appeal work under this regime. The average period of time was five and a half months before you'd get to a conclusion. They, by the way, unfortunately seem to think that the conclusion would not be a positive one in your case and looked at a number of the other big deals that were effectively rejected. That timing takes you past the drop dead for your transaction with Microsoft, in which case I imagine there would have to be some kind of tolling agreement or something that Microsoft or that you would have to agree to with Microsoft. Does Microsoft pay for that privilege? How does that work? What's going on behind the scenes around how this would happen? I can't speak to what UBS had to say about the transaction or why they came to that conclusion. I think we and Microsoft and our barristers who 
are exceptionally experienced at judicial review think that there's a way to accelerate the process and that the conclusions were so flawed that we should be able to get an accelerated result. And but that would have to happen in the next two months, basically, two and a half, three months, right? Well, I can't tell you what the timing would be yet because we haven't filed our appeals right. uh, briefing. But you know, we'll, we'll get a lot more uh, detail over the course of the next week and really better understand what the timing will be.